You know, typically the attacks are, are not really about the science. Um, uh, the attack on the science is a proxy for what is really an effort to discredit science that may prove inconvenient for certain special interests. Um, uh, people who, for example, uh, uh, feel that there's no role for regulation. Regulation is a bad thing. Well, you know, if you accept what the science has to say about human-caused climate change, um, then there will need to be regulation. We will need to be doing something about our escalating carbon emissions. And uh, there are people who don't like that. There are powerful special interests who don't like that. And so in trying to prevent the sort of prospect for regulation of carbon emissions, um, they try to discredit the case for concern. They try to discredit the science. Uh, they try to kill the messenger. Often it takes the form of an attack on individual scientists. Um, uh, there's a, a <clears throat> it's part of you know, the strategy of ad hominem attack. Um, when you can't win the legitimate argument, and make no mistake about it, the critics can't win the legitimate argument because the science is overwhelming. There's an overwhelming uh, consensus of the world's scientists that global warming is happening, climate change is happening, it's due to human activity, and it will get much worse and much more costly if we do no nothing about it. Um, you know, that's not just my view, that's not just the view of random scientists that you might run into at a scientific conference, it's the view of the U.S. National Academy of Sciences. It's the view of every national academy uh, of every industrial nation. It's the view of every scientific society in the U.S. that is weighed in on the matter of climate change. So faced with that overwhelming consensus, um, overwhelming scientific evidence, um, those who are uh, looking to forestall you know, legislation, policies to deal with climate change have decided their only hope is to somehow convince the public that despite that overwhelming scientific uh, consensus, there's still too much uncertainty to act. Of course, there's further irony to that in uh, the sense that if you talk to economists who study climate change impacts, they will tell you that uncertainty is actually a reason to act sooner because uncertainty can break in both directions. And increasingly, it looks like the uncertainties are resolving themselves in the direction of the problem being even worse than we initially thought.